Hi Barbadians, I told you I'd see you at the end of this week um, and I'm glad to be standing here. Thank you. Thank all of you for the wonderful prayers and for the outreach that has been absolutely tremendous and very humbling. Um, many of you have asked why the urgency? Well, the truth was that female gynecological problems, I had major surgery and having had a biopsy that proved not to be malignant, they still were concerned that the ultrasound and the blood tests were giving them signals that they did not like and hence I was advised that I needed to move with dispatch. But I thank you truly for all your prayers. I wanted to speak to you today because obviously we all know that things from tonight will change and this has been a difficult time. I want to thank Santi and Dale and all of the rest, Jeffrey, all of the rest of the public servants, Dr. Bess, Richard Carter, everybody, um, all of the frontline doctors and nurses and all of the police and the frontline protective service people, the soldiers, everybody. Everybody has really been pulling their part. The majority of the population has been pulling. But the reality is, as um, recommended by the public health officials, we do need to tighten and we do need to make sure that we can get a grip of this thing rather than us seeking to put measures in place that will seem as though we're cutting with a dull knife. And we all know that's the worst cut of all. It is going to be difficult. We are in uncharted territory. I don't think our parents went through, my parents certainly never went through this. We'd have to go back to grandparents and great grandparents a hundred years ago to see this kind of confusion and this kind of anxiety that the world is facing. I know it is difficult. Trust me, everyone is facing the same thing. But after today, I feel that I need to talk us through a few things because I know that we are better than this. And the one thing that we can't do is to doubt ourselves. We have to be able to pull back the numbers of persons testing positive. It means that where there is a high degree of risk with people mixing, large numbers mixing, we have to pull it back. And, and quite frankly, it is not going to be forever. Santa gave the assurance to the country yesterday that the supermarket owners had already put in um, place a request for them to be able to do forms of electronic commerce. Well, what is that? It means that people might have to call in, people might have to WhatsApp, people might have to email. But each supermarket will settle its own individual arrangement. And then once that is done, people will be picking up or delivering. Now, that means that there has to be coordination and I'm aware that there are continued meetings this week and the supermarkets need some time to be able to put those arrangements in place over the next few days. There are wonderful suggestions from all of you about how best to divide and who should access and we'll get to that stage week after next so that we can come back to a greater sense of normalcy. But we can only get there if we start to bring back down the numbers of cases and that means what I do is as important as what you do. If you have a grandmother at home and you are outside mixing with people who shouldn't be mixing, you're putting her at risk and if you put your grandmother at risk, she may also then be putting a healthcare worker at risk. So we need to hold each other's hands and certainly not do that kind of speeding that I'm hearing in the background. But the bottom line is we are our brothers and sisters keepers. And I'm asking us please that we're better than this. The country, we took you through from stage zero, stage one, stage two, stage three. Why? Because in some other countries, they went literally from stage zero to three in six hours, in 24 hours. And we knew the kind of panic or the kind of rush that that would set in. Over the course of the last three, four weeks, Barbadians have been encouraged to get themselves ready. Almost like how you get yourself ready for hurricanes. But the ball reality is, is that there is no right time to shut and there is no right way to say goodbye in anything. And therefore what we saw today is the typical Barbadian exuberance with respect to wanting to make sure that they are ready for battening up. And that's laudable. But in doing it, we can't forget all the other things that we needed to do. The social distance, making sure that you don't put yourself at risk. And therefore, I'm saying to you that, look, when these new arrangements come out, we have more than enough food on island. So don't stress about it. And for those people who are elderly, 
we need to make sure that we can take care of you if you literally have no one taking care of you the hotline number is there i'll ask them to put it up after my speech again but i want you to reach out because believe you me we will be there the arrangements for that electronic commerce fancy word again as i said will come but what is also the real truth that this is a time for needs not just wants this is a time for us to focus on needs you know every morning for breakfast i didn't, didn't start eating breakfast until a few weeks ago but i've gotten into eating a scrambled egg and a slice of cassava bread regrettably a slice of cassava toast that i like bread comes from Suriname I dunked a half loaf so in the next few days I ain't gonna have none but I will have to use something else bakes biscuits bread or whatever else is there or quite frankly probably nothing and try to lose a little more weight that I've been losing in the last few weeks but these are the kinds of real real decisions that we need to make to focus on what is it that we need not want and what is the time frame it's really two long weekends and he would have had two working days in between the two long weekends. So treat it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is a four day weekend. Wednesday and Thursday he would have gone to work and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, another four day weekend. It's not going to kill us. I know we can make it. And I'm asking us therefore to start to talk with each other. If you feel you are alone, I've told you you're not walking alone. That's why that third world song that I keep referring to is so critical. If you feel anxious or nervous you are not the only one who is anxious or nervous we are in this together and as i said what you do affects not just your household but everyone else around you and vice versa and i would like us please please to recognize that the basic things that we need to remember washing our hands not touching our face the social distance. But then the other things that we learn as children about how to respect each other and how to work with each other, not how to harm each other and to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are the things that make a difference. Now why? If we can bring the numbers down in the next two weeks or so, then it will allow us to move to another stage, a new stage of normalcy, not the traditional way, that we would expect because the world is still on lockdown. The region is still on lockdown. 10 countries tonight in the Caribbean are on lockdown. But what it will allow us to do is to reintroduce areas of activity that you can't do in your house, but that are necessary for people to earn a living so that they can continue to support their families. Construction, greater domestic agriculture. Um, we see now more people using the opportunity to do masks and, and I've spoken to the doctors about it and, and the WHO and the CDC have been changing their views on masks. Let me say at the outset that our masks have to be reserved, truly have to be reserved for those Barbadian healthcare workers on the front line. And these are the people along with the Cuban nurses and doctors we expect to get who are going to make a difference to keeping us all safe. And Jano, I have a renewed respect for them having undergone major surgery last weekend. But at the same time, if it is good for a person to use a mask to deal with someone who is sick or for a sick person to use a mask, there can be no harm for an ordinary person to use it. But that ordinary mask can't be one of the disposable masks that the healthcare workers need. Let it be a piece of cloth, a scarf or something as you're seeing all over the internet how to use it and at the same time take heed from the medical professionals who are still nervous that the mask cannot be used as a cure-all just because you got a mask don't mean you can touch your face now just because you got a mask don't mean you can ignore it and do the things and believe that you all of a sudden safe and you don't have to wash your hands mm -mm, none of that but at the same token by the same token if you can use the mask and it helps you to keep and pretend as if, as they tell you to do, pretend that everyone around you has it and pretend that you have it. And that way you're likely to take the greatest precautions to keep the numbers and the pressure off of the medical professionals that we have and the work that they will have to do. The numbers, yes, have been increasing. We've been lucky, God willing, there's been no deaths as yet. 
and we hope that we can drop that word as yet but the only way we can do it is by not putting the doctors and the nurses and the orderlies and the maids and all of the other people who have to work like this under pressure and if you have in a supermarket a hundred workers and two three thousand people coming through that supermarket in the day you're increasing the risk if we can make sure that we limit the numbers of persons going into the supermarket just to the workers and not necessarily a whole crew depending on what the supermarket arrangements are but that they can arrange deliveries and pickups and the other interventions then it becomes manageable the country has enough food so where do we go from here treat this as a renewal treat this as a rest treat this as a time um, in Lent we are accustomed to having to give up some form of something or the other we're trying to be able to renew ourselves this is where we are get some rest for me the doctors told me i needed six weeks recovery i've told them i don't know that i have six weeks that i can give at this day but the truth is that for two three weeks i've now understood the virtue of rest i get it but i also know that nothing is wrong with my head or my mouth and to the extent that i need to be able to do things that I'm going to do it because this is just an unusual time in the country and the region. I know that we can do this together. I know that we can all go in our houses tonight and give each other the reassurance, those who live in our house, those who are our family or our friends through the phone, that we can do this together. And I know that you have now to help me, that when we see people rushing or doing the things that suggest that they may be nervous or anxious just tell them breathe breathe take a deep breath take a deep breath and remember why we are doing this we are doing this because there is a pandemic called COVID-19 that is wreaking havoc it is contagious yes very contagious the majority of people who get it will not have serious symptoms will not die but having said that it is so disruptive because of how contagious it is that when it meets persons, no respecter of race, no respecter of age, no respecter of gender, no respecter of class, no respecter of wealth, nothing so. But when it meets persons whose immune system is not in tip top shape, then it can really do serious damage. And as we are noticing, we are at a stage now where all of us know somebody who is either died or who has it, or who is somebody's aunt to somebody that we know, as Santia told you the other night, this is where it is. So it is not about the future, it is about the here and now. These next 11 days, these next two long weekends with two days in between, stay safe. I'm gonna talk you through it. I hope over the course of the next few days, God willing, and once I'm feeling strong enough to keep talking to you through this, because I know that all of us are in this together. This will come to be regarded as one of the most testing periods since independence. We know that. But I want each of you to know that Barbados and every Barbadian does not walk this road alone. We shall not doubt ourselves. And we know that the Lord has been the people's guide for the past 300 years. With him still on the people's side, we have no doubts, no fears. I love you. I ask you to stay safe and to recognize that we shall get through this with as minimal problems as possible. Thank you. God bless.